Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So, as you can see, we're actually going to be starting a new video series starting today, which is about algorithms. And I made in a recent live stream an announcement that what we're going to do is we're going to have a one video on Monday for algorithms type stuff, one video on Wednesday for discrete math type stuff, and one video on Friday for theory of computation stuff. And maybe some examples on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but that's how we're going to proceed from here. Because a lot of people have been asking, can you do some videos on algorithms and discrete math? And I've been telling them, hey, I, I have so many videos to make before we get to that. I figure let's just do all of them at once. So this video series is about algorithms. So what is an algorithm? So there's a really bad joke that like algorithm is just a portmanteau of the word uh, Al Gore and rhythm. So it's basically just a former presidential candidate trying to play the drums. But terrible joke aside, what is an algorithm? So what it really is, is a way of trying to accomplish some goal in an unambiguous way. So let's just think about... Um, the song that goes 100 bottles of beer on the wall, bottles of beer on the wall, uh, 100 bottles of beer, uh, take one down, uh, pass it around, and then basically we just repeat these three lines, but with one number less, and then we just keep going until we hit uh, uh, one and then zero. So then the next line would be 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Okay. And then we continue like this. So then the next line, of course, would be 99 bottles of beer, take one down, pass it around, then we go to 98, then 97, etc. So th this is a phrase, and what we would want to know, for example, is maybe we want to know how many words are printed uh, throughout the course of this. So if I start off at 100 right here, and so everything that is not that is separated by a space, maybe we call that a word, and then maybe we want to know the number of words that are printed as we go all the way down. Um, maybe we would want to know how many lines there are. So each of these is one line, how many there are in total, and it's pretty easy to figure that one out. Uh, many different things we would want to know here. So the thing is, well, is this, oops, is this actually an algorithm? So I would actually say no, it isn't, because let's actually look at this. This says that uh, we're printing this line, then this line, then this line, and then this line. Well, someone could say, oh, well, the next part of the song is these dots right here, right? Uh, someone could interpret it that way because that's how I wrote it right here. If someone is just staring at what we just accomplished right here, this tells us that we... Uh, we'll print a bunch of dots at the end, and the number of words is whatever's in these four lines plus these dots right here. The number of lines is four plus the number of dots here. I don't think that's what we would mean here. We want something that uh, these dots are representing, repeating this procedure over and over and over until we reach a certain point. Well, another thing we would want to know is, well, when do we stop? Do we stop at zero? Do we stop at one? Do we stop at 10? 50? I don't know. We need to be able to write this in an unambiguous way so that anyone who's looking at how we're, however we're going to accomplish this, we want this to be as specific and precise as possible. So what does this really mean here? What does the hundred even come from? It comes from um, folklore and, and whatnot, but could I substitute some other number here if I wanted to? And of course, yeah, a lot of people make jokes about, well, we can just start at a million and then go our way down. And obviously no one's ever saying all of that, I hope, but we could in principle do that same idea. 
And you may be thinking, okay, well, this is just completely useless. No one ever really cares about something like this. Well, you should care because this whole idea of taking something, not a bottle of beer, but taking something and repeating it, trying to make it precise, is the fundamentals of every algorithm out there. So what is an algorithm? To give a short answer, is an unambiguous set of instructions that allows whatever you're doing to run in a finite amount of time. It always stops, no matter what. So that's something we should clear up right here. So an algorithm is, uh, has, sorry, it always halts. So that's the property of an algorithm. Okay. Um, what about if I wanted to output the digits of pi? So like I I'll put three, then one, then four, then one, five, nine, two, six, etc. Well, there are an infinite number of digits in pi, so that's obviously not going to stop. So what do we call that in this scenario? It's definitely not an algorithm because it doesn't stop. We would call these a procedure. So a procedure um, here is the same idea, exactly the same, except we're not required to halt. Uh, I, I, actually, I should say stop here. Stop is a more intuitive word, but it means the same thing. So whatever you're doing, whatever um, set of instructions you're trying to compute, the algorithm will guarantee to stop. A procedure doesn't guarantee to stop. Okay, But in both cases, it's an unambiguous set of instructions. So how do we actually write this as an unambiguous set of instructions? Well, it's pretty clear that it's going to stop if we tell it to stop at zero, because if it starts at 100, it's going to keep going down until it hits zero. So uh, I'm assuming that you've programmed at least a little bit. So what we would want to do is to give us an input of what this algorithm should take. It takes in some kind of input, or not maybe, does some work for a finite amount of time because it's an algorithm, and it outputs something, namely all of these lines right here. So how would we actually um, write a function to do this? So I'm going to call this function bottles of beer. Well, we got to specify what the input parameters are here. Well, the only one that would make sense is whatever number that we're going to kick things off here, so to speak, with. In this case, it's 100. We could, we shouldn't make this allowed to be any number that we want to. But I could hard code 100 into this if I wanted to. So let's just hard code n as, the, as a number. So n here is going to be an, um, not an, a positive integer. So some positive integer at least one. And we got to be able to specify this part because what if uh, I didn't say this and n could be a string of characters or a rational number or a real number? Well, if it was any one of those things, this subtraction really, well, the, the meaning of the lines wouldn't make sense. But even setting that aside, well, what do we do if we keep subtracting one and we end up with a negative number? That wouldn't make sense either. Um, if it was a fraction. So we need to be able to specify the type of the input also. So what is the first step going to be? Well, we want to be able to run these three lines uh, from whatever number that was passed in all the way down to zero. Let's just say we go all the way down to, to zero. But notice here that it says take one down. So if this was zero bottles of beer on the wall, uh, we can't actually take one down. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a for loop from i equal n initially starting at this value. So we're starting at this value uh, down to uh, 1. And so I want to include one here, and then we'll have a final set of lines for when we want to actually print zero. So what do we want to do here on the inside? So here I'm assuming that we have I bottles on the wall. What do we actually do here? 
Well, what we should do is we should print I bottles of beer on the wall. And we're okay printing this part right here, taking one down, because I is at least one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste all of this stuff down to here, to, to uh, this part right here, make it a little smaller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this as a string, for example. The, the details don't really matter. But what I'm going to do here is change the 100 to i. Because I want this i variable to reflect the i variable in the for loop right here. Why do I want to do that? Well, if this was hard-coded at 100, it would just print 100 over and over and over. And the great thing is we don't need to do anything else right here. Uh, because the next loop is going to uh, decrement i to the value one less than it, and then we'll print the correct thing right here. And then as a final measure, what we want to do is to print um, the final thing. Let's just say the, the first two lines, but with zero. Again, um, there are many things that you can print. It's an arbitrary function, but I'm just going to put zero in both of these cases right here. And I'm going to make it red to actually denote that it really is hard-coded to zero. And the, so the zero here is outside of the for loop. So notice that the for loop is on step one, and inner step A is for dealing with the I variable. And step two, which is outside of it, is dealing with exactly zero bottle. Okay? And is this an algorithm, which is something that we should always ask? And I guarantee it is, because one, the input here is a positive integer. So if this is a positive integer, it's some finite number, and we start at this number and work our way down to one, one at a time. So eventually we will hit one at some point because we'll just keep subtracting it over and over. And so the for loop stops, and so we can the print at the end obviously uh, runs in a finite amount of time. So this is an algorithm that runs in a finite amount of time. It is an unambiguous set of instructions because we specified what the input is, what type it is, as well as what the steps are exactly what to do. The for loop starts with some condition and makes some modification each time. And we have a print instruction right here, just print this, don't, think, uh, don't do anything fancy. And then the print at the end is pretty simple too. Okay, so that's what an algorithm is. It's an unambiguous set of instructions that runs in a finite amount of time. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment down below if you have any other interesting algorithm ideas. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And as always, uh, thanks for watching.